traffic, sports, and morning show funnies. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. Last night on the new Celebrity Apprentice. John, let's say yours first. Before you taste my candy, perhaps Mr. <laughs> my friend Mr. Washington. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I always like that portrait of Ben Franklin better, but... <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Abraham Lincoln? Oh, now we're talking. We're getting there. He's trying to bribe <laughs> right Warren Buffett Did with you say uh, you met money. I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to 100, let me know. <laughs> you have only fallen behind by very little. Okay, so don't beat each other and beat it yourself up about this thing. You did great work. I liked your photographs, but you fell short as a project manager and you didn't go all the way. Kyle, you terminated. Get to the chopper. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, one of the tasks you very much. were Thank to you. develop a candy. Now, Warren Buffett is a b real big candy freak. Oh, really? He loves candy, and they had to come up with a new candy that he would like. Now, one of the teams, now understand, in this day of Internet and, and uh, Google, you think you might want to Google what kind of candy this dude likes and make a candy that has those ingredients? A good idea. One of the teams didn't even do that, <laughs> and they failed miserably. I got a I question mean, for you, G. How long has Schwarzenegger been in this country? And his accent is never. I mean, some people. Well, there's there's people from Brooklyn that have been right. living in Florida for that's 30 true. years, and they still have the Brooklyn yeah, accent. So true. I don't I don't know how that works. Yeah, I get. Well, I guess they they don't want to change. That's how they speak. And that's yeah. it. Now he's he's unique. He's different. You can't miss him. He is. But uh, and 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 I think the show was doing well. I, I don't know ratings wise. I guess it's not doing as well as it did when when Donald was at the helm. But um, here's um, John Levitt. I mean, that this dude. You know what the show the does bring boy. out. It brings out just how quirky some of these stars can be. Like that one dude. Who's that? Uh, oh, what is that guy who, once he got on Celebrity Apprentice, we realized he was, like, dead from the neck up. But John Levitt, he is too, man. Oh. There's something different about this guy. <laughs> uh, but here, more from Celebrity Apprentice last night. The fact of the matter is both of them were delicious, but Warren Buffett picked the crunchy one. Right. And the dark chocolate because he loves that. And if you would have done, and your team would have done enough research on what he likes and what he eats. I mean, and I he would have stumbled on that very quickly that he likes dark chocolate and not the milk chocolate, the lighter chocolate. <laughs> so it's, it's that simple. So there's a shortcoming right there. But well, the bottom I, line is, you leave me no choice. You're a great actor. You're a great comedian. You're a great friend of mine. And I love you. But, John, you're terminated. Now. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can go. You should see him when he comes in the boardroom and everything. And he's all, you know, Mark Burnett, I, he does a wonderful job with that show. Like I said earlier, you and I could be the host of that. As long as it's directed mm -hmm. by somebody who knows what the heck they're doing, we're good to go. Yeah, Mark Burnett's been around a long time. Very yeah. successful. And that Survivor and all that good stuff. We were talking about passwords earlier. And I asked this of you and Cliff, and both of you guys said the same thing. What's the most common password in the world? And both of you guys said password, and I would have said password, too, because people still use that. Sure. Um, they use the, the actual answer to this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. That's the most, I mean, I don't know. The website, KeeperSecurity.com, they figured out the most common password in 2016 by studying 10 million passwords that were revealed in a data leak, uh, data leaks and hacks. People are still, 17% of people are using one, two, three, four, five, six. And probably getting busted into regularly. I mean, that's what I would guess what people would be searching for. Uh, you know, if, if I want to try and find somebody's, I'll, I'll try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Well, yeah, yeah, but Paul, that's one out of six people have that password. Incredible. Incredible. Now, which means in theory, if there are six people who have accounts you'd like to hack into, one, two, three, four, five, six should get you into at least one of them. Here, oh, here's, the rest, <laughs> here's the rest of the top ten. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> the word a little KG there, yeah. The word QWERTY, QWERTY. which of course is the top keyboard, keyboard, the keyboard yeah. right there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, 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 one. One all the way through nine, and then a zero at the end. Password had ma made sure. the list. And it's just one, two, three, one, two, three. Guys, please. You know what I, I found that I've, I've done over the years? I found a particular, let's, let's call it farm, for example. Everything I did would be farm and then the code. So if it was, a, say, a favorite place I wanted to go to and I wanted to save it, I put farm in front of the word. 
So I knew whenever I had found something, just put add farm, and that was the password. Oh, okay. Or any word you want to pick. Mm -hmm. Farm, juice, but see, and, and see, and now there's these sites that make you put in an exclamation oh, yeah, point. You have yeah, to put yeah. in a oh, pound sign. Kind. I hate those kinds. One letter has to be capital. There's yeah. got to be a number. Now, those ones I swear at, yeah, usually, yeah. Paul, how sick does your kid have to be to miss school? Well, I would think, uh, you know, temperature, things like that. Uh, a survey asked more than 1,400 parents if, they still, if they'd still send their kids to school with these five symptoms. 88% of parents said they'd send their kid to school with a runny nose or a dry cough, as long as they didn't have a fever. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm that parent. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. I don't, I don't, after watching Bad Parents, though, I don't know <laughs> what kind of parent I was. <laughs> Folks, if you have not seen Bad Parents, please rent it. It's funny. Please. 84% uh, would send them to school with red, watery eyes, but no fever. Mm. I don't know about that. Red, watery eyes, that would scare me. I would think, yeah. yeah I don't know if I... Uh, 51 said they'd send them to school even if they did have a slight fever, as long as they were acting normal. <laughs> well, well which, now you got to uh, understand. That means you got to stay home with them. Well, most, I mean that factors into yeah, it too. No, both parents are working typically, you know, and who's going to stay home today? You or the wife, you know? It's uh, mm, because this can mess up your whole day. Oh yeah. If you got to sit there, fifty-one percent, um, no, forty-two percent said they'd send them to school if they'd thrown up and didn't have any other symptoms, <laughs> but only if they'd thrown up once. Oh, I see. So twice would be out of the question. So if your yeah. kid throws up twice, then you can't go to school. <laughs> And 20% would still would still send them to school if they had diarrhea. When my wife taught school, she said you would not believe the way kids come in sometimes. And she had to, she had to bring them to the principal's office and they put them in a place where the nurses were and things like well, that. Well, and I'm thinking parents know that. We're sure. Saying, well, wait a minute. I can't miss a day at work. Mm -hmm. Let me send them to school and they'll just be in the, yeah. in the nurse's office exactly. until the yeah. school is over. That's right. And yeah. hopefully they'll get better. <laughs> is that a bad parent? It all depends on your perspective, Gene. No, I suppose in your family you had a nanny, so you weren't worried oh, about Oh, yeah, this. right. <laughs> uh, so, folks, watch Bad Parents. No, was it Bad Moms? Bad Mom. Bad, watch Bad Moms and determine if you were. And you know, one good line in that movie, I thought, was the fact when these mothers were sitting around th talking about their kids' short shortcomings. Uh -huh. Oh, my kid killed a hamster. And I think she did it on purpose. You know, what did you raise? What, I got a murderer for a kid? My kid is so dumb, I don't think he'll even get out of high school. I mean, all of these things that we have shortcomings. And then they said, you really don't know if you did a good job with your kid until you're done. They then say, what do you do? You can't do it again. You already raised them. They said, beware of the kid who pulls the wings off a fly. Well, I mean, come on. Who takes the who takes that <laughs> um, the uh, micro micro uh, what uh, burns heads off of ants and stuff? <laughs> oh, the, with the magnifying with glass. the magnifying yeah. glass and everything. Is that kid going to turn out to be a mass murderer? Well, he's creative. Well, yeah, <laughs> but Paul, I mean, the, the movie actually made me think. It made me think. Was I a bad dad? Funny thing, I just mentioned pulling the wings off flies and Cliff was smiling. Cliff, Cliff's eyes lit up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know what kind of kid he was. <laughs> uh, good morning, folks. It's a Tuesday. It's the Morning Show with Mr. G and Paul Stone. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. 1590 WPSL, The Morning Show, G and Paul. It's 813 and the lovely and talented, uh, oh, the, the Sunrise Theater. Yes. Oh, my Our goodness. good friend, Ann. Hey, Ann, good morning. Good morning. And how are how you are today? You? I'm great. How about you? You know what? I, I'm fine. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, because we were talking about this just yesterday, uh, Greg and Carol were at that uh, Billy uh, Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo concert, and they're still clapping, Ann. Oh, that's great. They're that's still the, clapping. Yeah. They walk around the building clapping for no apparent reason. I'm like, what are y'all clapping at? It was a wonderful show. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't imagine. They said the harmonies were just perfect, and what a better place to have that kind of harmony. And he said the band, the band, and was smoking. Yeah, they were really, really good. It, it was a great night. Yeah. And I just, Those that missed it, well, maybe sometime in the future they'll come back. Right on. But we've got a whole lot of good things coming and happening at the Sunrise Theater. Lay it on his hand. Well, we do. We've got uh, a great weekend coming up. We've got Kenny Rogers for his final uh, world tour on Saturday evening. We do have a few tickets left, I believe maybe less than 100. So if you're thinking about doing something and you want to see Kenny Rogers for the last time, get to the box office or go online and get those tickets. And we have Late Night Catechism in, live in our black box uh, venue with um, Sister, who's going to be dealing out all kinds of... Um, Fun things for the students, being the audience, that is. 
to answer questions on um, growing up Catholic. So you'll, if you're Catholic, you'll enjoy it. If you're not, you'll still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Aaron, not Catholic, but I thought it was a hoot. I, I'm looking on the website, and the, every now and then you guys have one of these um, little different shows. Uh, I remember the aluminum foil thing that you guys did, and you've got something called Art Rages. Yes, Art Rages is really neat. It's kind of like a almost um, similar to sort of Blue Man Group, okay. but it's done with music and lights, and they actually paint a canvas. I think there's three or four canvases, large canvases, that they paint during the show. And it gets people up out of their seats. You have to go on stage and you interact with um, the uh, folks doing the show. So it, it, it sounds like a lot of fun. I know it sounds a little out there, but if you go to our website, we mm -hmm. have a video and you can click on it and see what it's all about. I mean, it captivates vocals, uh, interactive choreography. I mean, uh, audience participation for sure. Right. And that'll be a lot of fun. And it's always fun because when you see people get up on stage that you know, and uh, I won't say make, be silly, but they are sillier than usual probably. So The Voice, <laughs> the voice of Romance Tour 2017, Ann. I know. Mr. Johnny Mathis. <sighs> Now, Paul, you've seen him live before. Several times. Okay. Outstanding. Outstanding. Now, Johnny, and he's 81 years old. I was getting ready to say, Johnny's up there yeah. like with, uh, with our boy, um, just, just celebrated his 90th, uh, Tony Bennett. Yes, huh? I do believe he's still got the voice, though. Still has the voice. Wow. He yeah. does. He certainly does. And, again, we have a few tickets left for that one. It's the, both, both the Johnny Mathis show and Kenny Rogers will be sellouts. So, a um, few seats left, limited. Um, let's get those. For Friday, January the 27th. Mm -hmm. And also, that evening is our, our annual membership party. So if you happen to be a member for this year of the Sunrise, then you are invited to that before the Johnny Mathis show. Oh, and talk about membership, Ann. Well, membership has its um, um, you know benefits. You get the uh, opportunity to go into the meet and greets if we have those that the artist allows. And that's for um, members that are at the 250 uh, and above levels. Um, also, you get um, all the advance notice of ticket sales. You get to buy before it goes to general public. So you get to pick the best seats that you want. And it, we just have, a, a like, the membership party. That's another benefit. And we also have other opportunities that are in there, naming opportunities and that type of thing. So um, if you're interested, call the box office or either go online. We have a membership brochure there that you can fill out online or um, just call up the box office and say, I want to become a member at this level. And that way, when we add new shows, because we're not done yet by any means, <laughs> we'll be adding more shows, um, you get that opportunity. Excuse me, that opportunity to purchase first. Hmm. And there, there is a whole bunch of them that already exist, folks, that we haven't even talked about. I mean, in February alone, we've got Jay Leno coming to town, the Duke Ellington Orchestra, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Art Garfunkel. I mean, come on. It's just an endless list of great entertainment. Go to the website, sunrisetheater.com, and just, as Ann mentioned, just click on some of these things, and um, you, they'll give you more information about it. And it's just a great website and a great venue, beautiful downtown Fort Pierce. Paul, you know, you and I do it. Hey, we go down. Down there, you go, 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 get you some dinner and go to the theater, man. What, what a great night! The box office seven seven two four six one four seven seven five. It's the lovely, lovely Sunrise Theater for the Performing Arts in historic downtown Fort Pierce. And thank you as always. Thank you, and I hope to see you at the Sunrise soon. Right on, baby. That's Ann Saturday. Our yeah. con a connect con connection with the Sunrise Theater, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Good connection. Mm -hmm. Good connection. You better believe a great place to be. Eight eighteen. Now let's send this over to Paul now for these stories. <laughs> Good morning, it's 819, it's 58 degrees now, time for the news from 1590 WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast, along with our news partners at CBS News Channel 12, the Florida News Network, and T.C. Palm. You know, it's, oh, okay. it's kind of like, eat, like a pie-eating contest when you win, the person who wins eating the most pies mm -hmm. gets a free pie. Oh, okay, so well. it's, <laughs> it's more flying, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you mentioned uh, one of the most annoying people on the plane is that person that smells. It was something she ate something or oh yeah, next to a lady with garlic on her breath <sighs> for about. Well, I was flying to Australia, G. It was seven. It, the the flight from L.A. to Sydney, fifteen hours and forty minutes nonstop. Why do we feel uncomfortable? Saying to that person, "Here, ma'am, yeah, we we feel so have a mint. <laughs> well, yeah, and you feel so weird to say that yeah. to them, but we should be allowed to say that because, ma'am, yeah. your breath smells bad." <laughs> 
I just drank a lot. You know, kicking the back of the seat, though, and I've, I've turned around before and, and said to the lady, woman, Ma'am, you're, you're kicking your, your my... kid is kicking my seat. Yeah. Well, he's had a tough day. I'm having oh, a tough time. he's had yeah. a tough, what? Yeah, I'll give him a tough day. The most <laughs> annoying people on a plane, we, and we're at number five, someone who gets too drunk. Number four, someone blasting their music. Number three is someone who smells bad. Mm-hmm. Parents who let their kids run wild is number two. Mm-hmm. And the number one, someone who kicks the back of your seat. <laughs> Ma'am, your son is kicking my seat. Oh, well, he's had a rough day. Let him <laughs> kick it. <laughs> what? That's self-absorbed. I tell you, it's uh, 830. We'll pause for your Florida News Network. <laughs> then more of the morning show. You're hearing the morning show. Talk to the Treasure Coast, 1590 WPSL. Going to have the time of your life. Well, wow, I'm looking at this on CBS this morning. It says uh, why Air Force One could be a downgrade for Trump. <laughs> what the heck does he have well, in his jet? The first billionaire in office. Gee, you never can tell. Wow, man. Yeah, I'm telling Whoa, you. interesting. Uh, Chuck has joined us. Hey, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning, G. Good morning, Paul. Good How morning, you guys? Chuck. We're fine, thank you. Good for you, a rabbit good, good. Papa. You know, you sent us a you sent us a, a text of uh, some uh, <laughs> some uh, photos of you uh, on a mountain skiing. Where the heck were you, dude? Uh, West Virginia, a uh, place called Snowshoe Mountain. And I got to tell you, you have no idea how colorful this state is <laughs> when you're in a place like that. I mean, it's uh, it's a shade of brown. <laughs> oh, Plus, you were, you were wearing all that Green Bay stuff too, weren't you? Well, that was the brightest yeah, color there, course. probably. <laughs> you know, I mean, that that's a cool thing. Politics, forget that stuff. But man, you wear something like that, and everybody's talking, and uh, you just you know, you talk about this, talk about that. It's great. Football was where it's at, you know, sports anyway. Hey, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool for <laughs> for lack of a better word, huh? Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was fog. You. Fog the whole time, and a light drizzle for the most part. Just a shade of being freezing where it would have been snow. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? Well, that's it nice. Was, it was fun. It's nice to get away like yeah, that, man. Very cool. Absolutely. But that game, watching it later, man, I was on the edge of my sit I'm back sure you watching were. that thing. Yes, you were. <laughs> and Chuck, you're gonna probably end up somewhere in the top ten, huh? I don't, you know, haven't even had a chance to look. I I missed one. I I think I picked Kansas City. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so anyway. But right. hey, it, it was all fun. But uh, Paul, next time you come into something like that with a lady with, uh, you know, uh, bad breath or something, yeah. you just ask him, uh, excuse me, are you standing on your head or would you like a chlorette? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, boy. Uh, Chuck, it was a long flight, man. I couldn't handle all that. But, but Chuck, <laughs> why, why do we feel, we, we don't feel right telling someone they have bad breath? It, it, it just goes against our grain, you yeah. know? I, I know. There was somebody on jury duty like that a few years ago. No bad breath, but the guy just stunk. Oh, man. And yeah. there's nothing worse than I don't think anything worse than that. You, we kept trying to turn your head and take little sips yeah, of see, air. I, had I, I wouldn't even attempt to deal with that because there's nowhere for him to go and get, take care of that. But with the bad breath thing, I'm thinking maybe we can go, ma'am, I, I'm just saying this because you, you're a beautiful woman and I know you probably would not want to think that your breath is, but <laughs> ma'am, it, I just want but, you to but, know. I'm, I'm your, here, here, take one of these. Don't you know when you have bad breath? Well, you would think I so. I would. Th- I'm yeah, conscious yeah. of it. I, oh, yeah, I mean, I know when I smell like a bow hog. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's mm. funny. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, what are you going to do? You know, it's... Uh, well, that's just yeah, like if somebody has a booger hanging out of your nose. You got to <laughs> tell them, Chuck. You got yeah, to. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah well, you should. You should. Well, you we're know, not going to tell that's... Cliff when he has one. Let's let him walk around. <laughs> I've, I've heard you tell Cliff that. I've heard you, I have I heard you. Yes. I, did. Cl- I was embarrassed it. for him. I said, Cliff, there's a booger hanging right there. Man. Here, want me to get it for you? Just don't get it gonna, for him. Let them get it. I'm going to put on PSL TV and check it out right now. We're exactly. We're going to be on TV later on. You got to be looking good. Hey, Chuck, thanks a lot, man. Have yourself a lovely day, okay? You're welcome. Thank you. Thank mm, you. Oh, there's, there's a piece of toilet paper underneath your shoe, by the way, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, too. And from Studio 3BA, let's talk sports with Paul Stone. Well, thank you, G. It's a big W for the heaters. That's right. Final call of the game last night. I am so excited about the inauguration. It's going to be an extravaganza like you've never seen before. It really is. Before I get into anything else, let me clear up some rumors. The Rockets are going to be there. They're all going to be dancing for me. Some topless, depending on their cup size. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. And as far as the Mormon Tabernacle Choir not being thrilled about performing, let me tell you something. 
They are not even in the top ten of my favorite Tabernacle Choirs, all right? Their album sales are absolutely terrible. But there's so many wonderful people who are going to make this truly spectacular. And look, it's not just going to be country singers and religious groups. I have reached out to everyone, especially in the black community. And I'm happy to announce that I've already gotten a verbal commitment from the people at Kanye West Sanitarium. <laughs> we are going to sign him out for the day, give him all his meds, his Thorazine, whatever else he needs, and he will be in really good hands. It's absolutely going to be star-studded from top to bottom. We're going to have elephant rides for the kids where they can saddle up and trot around on either Chris Christie or Kelly Clarkson. It's going to be so much fun. All right, I got to get going. <laughs> News, traffic, sports, and morning show funnies. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. This is very interesting. It's reported that Donald Trump will use two Bibles when he takes the oath of office. <laughs> when asked why, he said, in case my hand burns through the first one. <laughs> and he goes, oh, why would you talking about? I read that the Marriott Marquis in Washington, D.C. has a $75,000 inauguration package that includes 24-hour champagne service. People said, who needs to drink through the whole inauguration? And then Hillary was like, stop talking and pour. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Uh, did you hear this? After he sworn in on Friday, Donald Trump said he's actually taking the weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> Then Obama said, uh, Donald, I think you're looking at my schedule. Uh, <laughs> you're president, like, all the time. I've been watching. Yeah, a lot of the focus this week has been on Betsy DeVos, who's Trump's pick for Secretary of Education. She's a billionaire from Michigan. She has no experience in education. Her family co-founded Amway. Kids went to private school, the whole thing. But the most interesting exchange was when she suggested that some schools need to have guns in them to protect the kids from grizzly bears. You can't say definitively today that guns shouldn't be in schools? Well, I, I will refer back to uh, Senator Enzi and the school that he was talking about in Wapiti, Wyoming. I think probably there, I, I would imagine that there's probably a gun in the school to protect from potential grizzlies. <laughs> order, order! I really wish Trump would have walked in the hearing and said, Betsy, you're fired, and then left. <laughs> If grizzly bears are a problem in our schools, then this Betsy DeVos, maybe she's not... We need to get Sarah Palin in there. We're worried about <laughs> grizzly bears. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> want to make over 100000 a year playing Legos? Sure, why not? Ch check this out, Paul. You actually might be able to pull it off, but you'll have to hustle and probably do a lot of lying on your resume. The University of Cambridge in England, they're looking for a professor of Lego. Wow. I wonder how you get your degree in that. They want them to study Legos, figure out ways to incorporate them into education, analyze the role of Legos and other toys in kids' lives worldwide. We've got a house full of Legos. My grandson made them forever now. They're just sitting around. We take them home. I don't want them. Dad don't want them. So they're going to be other garbage, I think, soon. $100,000 a year playing with Legos. Now, there's two catches, though, Paul. Okay, here we go. The deadline to apply is tomorrow. Got to hurry up. And two, they're looking for someone with a, with an, quote, outstanding research record of international stature and vision, leadership, experience, and enthusiasm. Okay. A college looking for a professor of Lego, and you can apply. Yeah. Well, we just got a traffic incident. Oh, boy. Yeah, gee, it uh, sounded like Okeechobee Road near the turnpike uh, was shut down northbound, I think you were saying. All directions. Yeah, so, folks, if you're around that area, please drive with care. And if you happen to hear any more updates, please give us a call. Your number is 340-1590. And I guess uh, northbound on the turnpike as well, right there at the Okeechobee area, is uh, is a mess as well. So, folks, just, just avoid Okeechobee, Okeechobee near the turnpike completely. Yeah, Because then sure. you ain't going nowhere anytime fast. And, of course, our traffic angel will keep us posted on that. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. The Morning Show with Mr. G and Paul Stone. The talk of the Treasure Coast. 1590 WPSL. I've known Bob Rumson for years, and I've been operating under the assumption that the reason Bob devotes so much time and energy to shouting at the rain was that he simply didn't get it. 
Well, I was wrong. Bob's problem isn't that he doesn't get it. Bob's problem is that he can't sell it. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. And whatever your particular problem is, I promise you, Bob Rumson is not the least bit interested in solving it. He is interested in two things, and two things only, making you afraid of it and telling you who's to blame for it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win elections. You gather a group of middle-aged, middle-class, middle-income voters who remember with longing an easier time, and you talk to them about family and American values and character. And you wave an old photo of the president's girlfriend, and you scream about patriotism. You tell them she's to blame for their lot in life. And you go on television, and you call her a whore. Sydney Ellen Wade has done nothing to you, Bob. She has done nothing. To put herself through school, represent the interests of public school teachers, and lobby for the safety of our natural resources. You want a character to debate, Bob? You better stick with me, because Sidney Ellen Wade is way out of your league. I've loved two women in my life. I lost one to cancer. And I lost the other because I was so busy keeping my job, I forgot to do my job. Well, that ends right now. Tomorrow morning, the White House is sending a bill to Congress for its consideration. It's White House Resolution 455, an energy bill requiring a 20% reduction of the emission of fossil fuels over the next 10 years. It is by far the most aggressive stride ever taken in the fight to reverse the effects of global warming. The other piece of legislation is the crime bill. As of today, it no longer exists. I'm throwing it out. I'm throwing it out and writing a law that makes sense. You cannot address crime prevention without getting rid of assault weapons and handguns. I consider them a threat to national security, and I will go door to door if I have to, but I'm going to convince Americans that I'm right, and I'm going to get the guns. We've got serious problems, and we need serious people. And if you want to talk about character, Bob, you better come at me with more than a burning flag and a membership card. If you want to talk about character and American values, fine. Just tell me where and when and I'll show up. This is a time for serious people, Bob, and your 15 minutes are up. My name is Andrew Shepard and I am the president. Wow. American president is the movie. I mean, that... Uh, uh, every time I see that scene there, I mean, it just uh, something... Now, have you seen it, Paul? Yeah, I have. It's a great. I love the fact that during the whole movie, not the whole movie, but he's he tries to go and buy flowers for this woman. Yeah. By and him, he's nobody, the president all by himself, and nobody will sell. They they, they, they can't believe well, the president will get out of a car, walk into a flower shop, and try to buy something, but he doesn't realize he's got a rose garden in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Paul, things are happening in Washington, and we just saw, look, look at the, the people are everywhere. they got a little rain going down there, too. Look kind of cloudy, overcast, it looks like, G. Yeah, it does, and they're expecting rain, and uh, as you mentioned in one of your reports, they're allowing these little tiny little umbrellas, I mm-hmm. guess, to, yeah. to, I guess, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to do. Give, give the Secret Service more to worry about. Mm, but uh, early morning, a private family breakfast in tradition, if tradition holds, uh, the Trumps and their uh, invited guests uh, share a private breakfast at Blair House. Uh, that's the president's guest house. And they're expected to stay the night there. Uh, around 8.30 this morning, very soon, I guess uh, Donald Trump and his family will attend a religious service at St. John's Episcopal Church. That's just a short walk from Blair House. And then at 9.30, coffee date at the White House. I think they're having this black with cream and sugar? Well, they just had breakfast, though, an hour ago. Yeah, but coffee. they didn't have any coffee. Oh, I see. They had orange oh, juice at the breakfast. Oh, okay. Bags and aching and Flo- orange juice. Florida orange juice, no doubt. Of course of it was. Course. Anita Bryant, is she still alive? I don't know. Uh, I think she was there. Uh, well, the, the, this is tradition, too, Paul. The incoming and departing presidents meet at the White House with their wives, as is customary. Mr. Trump and uh, Mr. Obama will then ride together down Pennsylvania Avenue 
to the Capitol. And I can imagine Barack going, Don, I got to tell you, man, <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing, dude. You will, you're a, a mother. You, 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 you're going you're gonna to leave here in four years or eight years. You're, you're going to be grayer than me. You will really open up that book, Don. <laughs> then you'll see what really can happens. Can you imagine the real conversations <laughs> that they have in that little oh, bit of ride? man. Hmm. That's, I don't know. And then, of course, uh, at 1130, the swearing-in ceremony with American officials and other dignitaries gathering uh, on the west front of the Capitol. The official inauguration ceremony will feature religious leaders with, with ties to Mr. Trump and remarks from Senator uh, Roy Blunt of Missouri, the chairman of the Congressional Inaugural Committee, and uh, musical performances. And, of course, uh, somewhere around noon, the oath of office and the inaugural address will take and place. Then it all begins and something ends. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Can you, ima- can you imagine the kids, though? His kids. Dad. My dad is going to be president in a few hours. I mean, I mean, these are well to do. I mean, these ain't just your average no. kids. Though. These are billionaire kids, but still, yeah, your dad is becoming president. A special day for sure. And, and of course, Ivanka, I saw this nice little special on her yesterday. Uh, I believe Channel Five did it, and they showed. Uh, I mean, she's moved out of her New York, uh, her New York digs, and moved into this really nice mansion. Very close to Obama's new mansion well, maybe, in Washington. Maybe we'll have coffee together. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're right not? in the same yeah. neighborhood, man. One of those real swanky, you know. You know There'll be plenty of now. Secret Service guys around for sure. I know. Yeah, Can you forever. imagine living in that neighborhood? Forever, yeah. Wow. Well, sure. And, her, of course, her husband is a big to-do in, oh, yeah. in Donald's administration. Well, we got four more years to talk about it, G, for sure. I know. Yeah, we do. Well, you know, he, he'll be on every night on the Jimmy Kimmel show. You know that. Wow, look at all those brownstones. That looks good. Look at, look at that scene there, though. That's the, that's the Capitol. And everybody's lining up and, uh, hmm. Well, it's history, man. I mean, it's, uh, I- I've never been to one of those. You ever been to no, one? No, I've never been to one. No, it's, it's, look, it's a pretty busy operation there. Kind of like New Year's Eve in New York City, you know? Well, yeah, and see, and, and I'm not into that. I, I, I would definitely not want to be at Times Square yeah. on New Year's. Uh, but, I mean, some people are into that kind of stuff. I, I mean, you know, they, they just want to be around. They want to have been there. I, be, I was there. That's right. When it happened, that's right. Well, let's see, where was I? I was on the corner of Fourth and Drucker. Oh no, that was Drucker and Fourth. No, no, it was Fourth. No, it was Drucker. No. <laughs> Wherever it was, G. Anyway, good morning, folks. It's eight twenty-one now. Sixty-four degrees on a nice morning. Nice Friday morning, that is. Time for the news from fifteen ninety WPSL. Well, just before noon today, Donald Trump will be sworn in as this country's forty-fifth president. The morning show with Mr. G. And Paul Stone, the talk of the Treasure Coast, 1590 WPSL.